Hi, good morning. My name's Catherine and I'm the Associate Pastor here at All Saints Anglican Church, Nelson Bay. And we are really excited to be with you this morning. Uh, once again, it's unusual circumstances, but we still believe that in a mighty God, a God who can work in all circumstances. So we are really um, looking forward to having this time together. Kesh is going to deliver us a great message, going to set us up for the rest of the week. And we are just going to have that time together. So sit back, enjoy, pause the recording, share it with friends um, and interact as much as you can.
Good morning, church. I'm Cash. I'm the lead pastor of All Saints Anglican Church right here in the heart of Nelson Bay. I want to talk to you this morning about hope. Have you got hope today? Because life is full of hopeless situations, isn't it? Life is so fragile. I mean, all it takes is one text message, one email, one phone call, even one test result for your life to be turned upside down in one instant. I mean, who would have thought six months ago that we would be talking about self-isolating and self-distancing as everyday language, and yet it's become the new normal. In our Bible reading today from John chapter 11, we hear the story about a man called Lazarus who died. And for his two sisters, Mary and Martha, their lives are turned upside down in one instant. The pain that Martha and Mary feel is very real, and it's one that many of us have experienced. Anyone who's lost a loved one knows the pain and that feeling of suffocation that comes with it. I know it happened to me many years ago when my brother died suddenly and unexpectedly. But my life and my family's life was turned upside down in one instant. I wonder if that's happened to you. A loved one died suddenly or unexpectedly, maybe in your family. Or your partner came home one day and said they no longer wanted to be with you and they wanted a divorce. Or maybe you went to work only to find out that you've been laid off. Life is full of hopeless situations. And the story of Lazarus at first seems like a hopeless situation. His sisters are heartbroken. All his friends are heartbroken. It was such a bad situation that the Bible tells us that by the time Jesus turns up two days later to the funeral, that he sees all these people crying and he's so moved that he himself cried. The Bible says Jesus wept. And when Mary hears that Jesus has turned up at the funeral, she runs to him and she says to him, Lord, if you would have been here, this would not have happened. Hear the frustration in Martha's voice. Because you see, if you go back to the beginning of the story, you'll see that when their brother Lazarus got ill, Mary and Martha send a message to Jesus to say, come quickly, your friend Lazarus is dying. But Jesus doesn't turn up. And now Martha's like, two days later, Martha's like, Lord, if you would have turned up when I asked you to turn up, this would not have happened. I wonder if you've ever had a verse 21 like that with God. It's frustrating to call on God, isn't it? And him not answer you. Because my expectation is that when I call on God, when I pray, I expect God to answer me. You ever been there? That you prayed and the worst thing still happened. You still lost the job. The relationship still ended. The diagnosis was still cancer. And the truth be told, you may not have said it. You may not have spoken it or even shared it with anyone. But in your heart, there was this feeling of disappointment and frustration with God. That God could have done something in this situation. That when something bad happens to us, to some, or to someone we love. There's this, we can't help thinking that if God really cared for us and really loved us, then he wouldn't allow this to happen to us. So what can we do when we find ourselves in hopeless situations? Well, when Jesus shows up, notice Martha gets up and runs to him. But Mary, she stays at home. Mary's like, I don't want anything to do with him at the moment. Because so often when we feel that God has let us down, that we withdraw from God. We don't want to be close to God anymore. We may might even start reading the Bible or praying or even coming to church. But Martha shows us a new way. She runs to him. And through all the pain and all the grief she's going through, she shares with Jesus all her sorrow. And when she gets to Jesus, notice that in verse 22 and 24, Martha keeps talking about what she knows. She says, I know whatever you ask of God, even now, that he'll do it. I know that my brother will rise again, Martha says. But Jesus never talks about knowing, he talks about believing. And he ends verse 26 with this question to Martha. Yeah, do, I know what you know, but do you believe it? Because if you believe, then there's an expectation that I'll do something, even in this horrible situation. In a way, what Jesus is asking Martha is, I know what you know. But do you trust me? 
And it's the same question that he asks of me and you today. Do you trust me? That when all your life comes crashing down, do you trust me? That when the test results aren't what you wanted, do you trust me? That even when your relationship breaks down, do you trust me? And even when your loved one dies, do you still trust me? Jesus carries on with the story and says, where have you put him? So they lead Jesus to Lazarus' grave. And Jesus says, roll the stone away. So they roll the stone away and Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus, who's been dead for four days, comes out of the grave and he's fully alive. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not even death has a grip on him. That the name of Jesus is what you need in hopeless situations. Proverbs 3 puts it this way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will guide your paths. I don't know what fears or worries you're facing at the moment, but my prayer for you today is this, that you'll keep on trusting, that you'll keep on hoping, that you'll keep on believing that the best is yet to come. That where you find yourself today is not how your life is going to end up. Or it's not going to be where it's going to end. So remember that. That where you find yourself today is not how your story is going to end. God has a plan and a purpose for you. You may not see it yet, but it's on its way. Jeremiah 29 puts it this way. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a hope and a future. And the Apostle Paul writes it this way in 1 Corinthians 2. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for those who love him. I may not know what my future holds, but I know who holds my future in his hands. So keep on praying, keep on asking, keep on trusting, and keep on believing. God hasn't finished with you yet. He's just getting started. Amen? Amen. That was a fantastic message from Kesh. It certainly spoke to me and I know it will have spoken to you too. So it's my privilege to pray for you now. So just quieten your mind, close your eyes if it's helpful, and I would be delighted to offer some prayers up now. Father God, we just thank you for your message from Kesh this morning. We thank you for his leadership at this time of uncertainty. And Lord, we thank you for your message of hope. We thank you that you are a God who shines hope in what can seem like hopeless situations. We thank you for your gift of Jesus, who is alongside us as we travel through these coming days and weeks. We thank you for the opportunity still to meet as your church and to know that despite these difficult circumstances, you are working wonderful miracles out every single day. So we just pray now as we go into these coming days uh, for your message to just to come into our hearts, come into our minds, help us to recall this message through the coming days until we can meet again. And we just thank you and praise you that you are a mighty God who is still working in all circumstances. So we just ask all these prayers in the name of your precious Son, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
so much for joining us this morning. It's been a wonderful to have this time sharing together. It was really good to share a word from God to, with you this morning. And let me leave you with a blessing. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And don't forget, if you are in any need, if you need some support, just reach out to us. We're available by email. You can phone the church office from Tuesday to Thursday. Um, so don't struggle. Uh, if you need us, we're here for you. And also look forward to a new and exciting bulletin coming into your Gosh. inbox this week. That's lovely. Well, have a great week, guys, and we'll see you all very soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>